There are new questions today about whether the shooting at YouTube headquarters could have been prevented. The shooter's family here in Southern California says they told police about her anger toward the company. The 39-year-old traveled from San Diego County to San Bruno. Her family reported her missing. Mountain View police found her about 30 miles from YouTube. She then drove to San Bruno and shot three people before killing herself. And we have live team coverage of the investigation with CBS 2's Randy Page in Menifee, where he's talking with the shooter's friends and family. But we begin with Tom Wade in San Bruno with new information on this case. Tom. Pat and Suzanne, I can tell you right now, police are still here on the scene at YouTube's campus in San Bruno, still trying to gather evidence and piece this all together. We've also just learned from a YouTube spokesperson that the shooter actually never made it inside of the building. We'll have more details on that in just a few moments. As I said, cleaning crews still here along with police trying to clean this place up. A lot of broken glass and damage to the building. And we're learning new details as well about what the shooter was doing leading up to the rampage. At YouTube's San Bruno campus, a stream of staffers trickled back into the building a day after a woman opened fire here. Police remained at the complex and crime tape sealed off the area. Meanwhile, police revealed new details about the shooter, 39-year-old Nassim Ogdam, and what she was doing in the hours before her rampage. Ogdam was apparently doing some target practice at a range nearby. She was at the, uh, the, the gun range early uh, the morning of the incident. Police have not identified the gun range, but law enforcement officers were seen entering the Jackson Arms Range in South San Francisco this morning. A witness there reported seeing someone they thought was Ogdom yesterday before the shooting. We've also learned from Mountain View Police that they found Ogdom sleeping in her car just after 1 a.m. yesterday morning. Mountain View is about 35 miles from the YouTube San Bruno campus. Mountain View officers located Ogdom after her family reported her missing and in that area. Mountain View police say they were told by Ogdam's father she was upset about YouTube restricting her video content, but said her father never reported she may be violent or armed. She was not detained. There was nothing by her body language, her, her conversation, her uh, demeanor, or the information that we received from the family that suggested that we should handle this in any other manner in which the officers handled it. As for motive, San Bruno police say Ogdam was likely targeting YouTube because she was angry over those restrictions on the videos mm -hmm. she posted. It is believed that the suspect was upset with policies and practices of YouTube. Forensic investigators are combing through her website and social media accounts for more clues. Online, she ranted against YouTube for how they treated her. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube. We also learned today from investigators that Ogdam likely entered the YouTube campus from a parking garage around lunchtime, then started shooting at her victims before taking her own life. And as I mentioned off the top, YouTube released a statement, and it reads in part, thanks to the security protections in place, she, Ogdam, never entered the building itself. We are also revisiting this incident in detail, and we'll be increasing the security we have at all of our offices worldwide. And back out here live, it looks like police are getting set to reopen the street here in San Bruno and perhaps return things back to normal. Of the three victims, two have been released from the hospital. They are two women, and they have been released, as I said, a man is still hospitalized, but his condition has been upgraded from critical to serious. As far as motive here, again, San Bruno police say they don't believe this woman knew any of her victims. Reporting live in San Bruno, I'm Tom White. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tom. Investigators were at the Riverside County home of the shooter's family in Menifee for hours today. And tonight, the family is speaking out. CBS 2's Randy Page continues our team coverage from Menifee. Randy. Well, Suzanne, the Ogden family is asking for privacy, so we moved across the street to honor that request. This Iranian family is devastated. I'm sorry. I can't believe it. Nassim Ogden's father, Ismail, emerged from his home this afternoon only long enough to hand out this written statement, which says, in part, our family is in absolute shock and can't make sense of what has happened yesterday. Although no words can describe our deep pain for this tragedy, our family would like to express their utmost regret, sorry for what has happened to innocent victims.
Her family tells us 38-year-old Nassim Agdam came to the United States when she was 18 as a refugee from Iran. They say she was an animal rights activist and vegan. Her YouTube videos show her passion for exercise and activism. She was known as Green Nassim by thousands of followers. Her family says about a year ago, Nassim became very angry when YouTube censored her videos, as Nassim herself explained online. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube, and I'm not the only one. This woman, who told us she was Nassim's aunt but would not give her name, described Nassim's online crusade in this way. Stop eating animals, and YouTube filtered her videos. That way that happened, and I'm so sorry. I feel so bad for the, those people shot. Hopefully they've been like. And she's, so she's angry at YouTube? Yeah, and because you, they filter. I'm so sorry. Members of Nassim Agdam's family say the 38-year-old activist had been living with her grandmother in this home in San Diego, which authorities searched today. Ismail told us he warned police that his daughter was angry at YouTube and there could be trouble. So for one year she was angry at YouTube and police said they would watch her in Mountain yeah, View. Yeah, but they didn't. Another aunt told us Nassim was not a violent person. They had no idea she owned a gun or that a tragedy like this could happen. Feeling so bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm feeling down. Well, well, I'm feeling so sad for What's the family going through? They're so sad. Did you have any idea she was had this potential to do this? Uh, no, I have any idea. Was she a loving person? Yes, of course. So the family is saying Ismail uh, warned police about that this could possibly happen. Police, of course, are saying that warning never came. One possible explanation is we notice that Ismail has an extremely pronounced accent. And this was a telephone conversation between here in Menifee and police in Mountain View. It's very possible that police didn't quite understand what he was trying to say. That could be one possible explanation. Pat, Suzanne?